welcome to CNBC Africa special. Joining us is the CEO of the Rwanda Stock Exchange, Pierre Celestine Rabakumba. And he's going to take us through 2019 and how it was with the Rwanda Stock Exchange. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Um, well, the year has been a bit um, up and down, I would say. Uh, we've been waiting for a few products to come to market. Uh, we've seen uh, quite an, an increment in the fixed income products uh, coming to the market according to uh, actually exceeded our expectations. And we have a few others, you know, in the in the making before the year ends. So product-wise, I think they, they, they will have more fixed income, both um, government and, and, uh, and uh, a few uh, in the corporate uh, uh, business world, but um, the for equities, uh, we you know last year we have done uh, a campaign for the small and medium enterprise companies, and that one has um, uh, taken a bit of time, but uh, we are pretty confident because a few companies are already working on their documentation. So hopefully we see a, a few uh, listings before year ends. So that's what we are waiting for on the product side. Um, but uh, before we close the year again, we are also going to be launching our third board, uh, which is the, uh, uh, the next gen, which is the basically you know, our closing of the year uh, for startups and, and other companies that uh, are in the small and medium enterprise uh, uh, space. So that one is basically meant for us to be able to hold the hands, uh, to, to handhold the companies which are starting because we have seen a, a serious gap for uh, many of our companies in Rwanda. Uh, as you know, we are not different than other African countries in terms of uh, doing business. So doing business in Africa, most uh, of our companies are small and medium enterprises, and we are seeing a lot of young people who are, who are struggling to get finance, but it's not really about finance. They have good ideas, but it, you know, there's, they are not, there's not enough uh, support for them to, to do many of the things they want to do. So um, we've realized that this is a, a niche we can uh, tap into and uh, actually become more relevant to our economies because um, uh, we, we are not as relevant as we should be. Uh, th that's where, and before I go into the doing business part side of things, uh, when you talk to the small SMEs, they seem to shy away. When people hear the Rwanda Stock Exchange, there is a fear for the Rwanda Stock Exchange. They, people don't, in fact, understand the role of the Rwanda Stock Exchange. And these are people in business, small, medium enterprises, employing five to 10 to almost 100, uh, sorry, to almost 50 people. Why are they shying away? Well, I think people shy away because of uh, different reasons. Uh, basically, you know, first of all, the first one I think is about literacy. They don't know exactly what the stock market is all about, and I cannot blame them. It's our job to do so, uh, and it takes time to get to reach out to everyone out there. And, but, but those even who understand, they fear disclosures sometimes. You understand? It's not about the money. You know, uh, some people don't want also to share the piece of their cake. But what we tell them, what we are trying to address and to remove those fears and to remove the, the fallacies, that, that, uh, that's how I call them. Uh, nowadays, in the world of today, you cannot hide anything. You can't hide from government, you can't hide from the taxman, and you cannot hide from your bank because your bank is going to be at your door every month. So what we are simply telling them is that the stock market is, is nothing to shy away from because you may get the money, you may get the advice that you need for your business to thrive. Because I think instead of fearing you from your, for, for your small cake, you should be actually fighting to, uh, to widen it. Instead of fighting for a small one, you widen it. Simple as that. You look at Bill Gates, he only owns less than 4% in Microsoft. And <laughs> the guy is the richest man in the world up, up to today. So what has he done right? What has Dangote done right? What has um, the likes of uh, James Mwangi have done in East Africa? Or the Chris Kirubis? So it's a very simple thing for us, I think, uh, and for people to understand that, uh, you know, going to the markets, uh, public markets, to raise funding or to get the proper advice. So the stock exchange is not really only about even listing your company. It's also, you know, uh, uh, coming in the clean. You know, you, 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 it's about you uh, strengthening your corporate governance. Part of the capital market to be developed is to raise long-term finance for the economy, uh, the second thing is to, uh, to have an avenue for people to be able to uh, save in a safe environment, safer environment, uh, and uh, increase and, and foster, fostering of co good corporate governance, which is something lacking in our community. So I think that is very, very important as we, we develop. And we, it's, a, it's, it's a continuous pro process. You will keep talking to people until we get tired or they get tired. 
And uh, just for follow up, uh, a few years ago, if uh, I, I may say two years back, you started uh, the second insurance of bonds on the stock exchange. Now, uh, uh, even this year, you've had insurance of some bonds. And what has been the market reaction, the consumer reaction to the second insurances? Oh, I think um, it's, it's the reopening, I think. That's uh, the jargon for our industry. You know, you issue a bond to make it more liquid, you, you, you reopen it for other people. Because what we realize that uh, most of the bonds that are issued in our market so far, actually all instruments we have that have been issued in Rwandan market have been oversubscribed substantially. So now you, that tells you one thing. People still want to... Even, Buy. Uh, even on the in reopening? The, the reopening, of course, also they get oversubscribed. So, so, so there is appetite. There is not enough instruments. That's what it tells us. So a lot of people are coming into the market to buy those instruments. The treasurers of banks, uh, institutional investors, even retail investors. So Rwanda right now, actually, on average, we have about 11% of retail participation. That's very huge, actually, comparatively to uh, our counterparts, maybe even the region. So the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the fixed income has been a bit... Um, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's safe. It's safe. Uh, uh, it's a safe instrument, and, uh, and the people are embracing it really uh, quite well. But for a country like Rwanda, which does not have enough uh, instruments in the market, uh, definitely will be number one choice for most people. Now, the recent World Bank reports are uh, doing business report. Uh, didn't seem to flatter Rwanda as previously. Yes, it's still number two in Africa, but it dropped some places on the global scene. And uh, one of the reasons down to that being pitted was Rwanda Stock Exchange. Yes. Yes. Uh, just just shed, shed some light on this. Yeah, I think uh, you are right. I, I think the doing business report uh, for the World, from the World Bank is, uh, is an exercise that has been there for many years. And countries are cited for different reasons. Uh, for Rwanda, this time around, we were cited for uh, good corporate governance vis-a-vis uh, -vis protection of minority shareholders. So now, this measurement was introduced this year. And we were not aware, by the way, although that's not an excuse necessarily, uh, but uh, it's a fact. You know, the measurement they use, they look at countries which have stock markets, and they look at a number of 10 companies. So in Rwanda, uh, we have only eight, we have less than companies listed, which is, I, I wouldn't say it's okay. I would wish to have 100 companies, but you know, contextually, if you look at that, uh, I wouldn't say it's as fair, really, for, the, for many countries. If you compare Rwanda to the United States of America, which is what we were measured against to all countries in the world. So we went down uh, globally, but in Africa we remained well. So Rwanda still is a good place to do business, a good place to do business, number two still on the continent. But uh, needless to say that we need to do an effort uh, to increase more companies. The stock exchange is barely there since 2011. So on average, you see um, uh, uh, with our counterparts in the region and beyond, including Mauritius or, or Nairobi, on average, looking at when company, uh, stock markets are created, you are, on average have about one and point something per year of a listing. Matter of fact, some of our, com our, our stock exchanges in the region have had the listings in the past few years. So for us, we are having more listings. We have some in the pipeline, but uh, it's work in progress. Like, like how, how many do we have in the pipeline? Uh, well, I mean, uh, we have at least uh, three companies, which are, which are right now, as I'm talking to you, are working on their documentation. And those are purely private companies. So, so and, and we, we have our own plans with the market, uh, capital market master plan, which we are going to be implementing uh, for the next 10 years. And a lot is in the pipeline. I think uh, what we have not been able to achieve in the past few years uh, we've been uh, in operations, it's going to be achieved if the master plan is implemented uh, the, the right way, uh, the way it was set out to, to be. So for us, really, um, this uh, doing business report to sum it up, uh, it was, uh, uh, first of all, factually correct but contextually wrong, okay? So, but the other thing is... Uh, because of a new measure. Yeah, the new measurement, it's not a bad measurement, by the way, you know, the, the, don't get me wrong, because you see, this looks at corporate governance. You see, mo companies or shareholders, mainly, uh, especially the, 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 the minority shareholders, are better protected in a public environment. 
you know, when, when the public is watching, uh, all shareholders behave. So that's what the stock market is all about because of issues of uh, transparency, accountability, and so on and so forth. That one actually protects companies. So if we have more companies, definitely that thing will not, ex will not come up again against Rwanda at that particular time. So I think all in all, we, we stand to gain from this and uh, we will continue efforts with uh, all our stakeholders uh, to see what, how we can progress as a country to that. Yeah, so now to get to the 10 companies, right? When you look around the region, uh, let's say uh, our neighbors uh, to the north, Uganda, who have gone on to uh, ask, actually they're passing legislation where uh, telcos are being forced to cross list. Now, is that the way to go? Personally, if I was to be selfish, I would say that's the way to go. But I don't think business is about forcing people. Well, well, why is it the way to go? Uh, well, I mean, if you force people, yes, it will bring more companies to the stock exchange. But if you persuade them, because it has its own merits and demerits, you see. So, and it makes sense for companies, especially public utility companies, to, to go public. Uh, if, if you are having people as your customers, why not your stakeholders? And, and sharing all the profits because they're also your customers. So it makes sense to me, if you ask me. But it, by way of uh, forcing, I don't think it's a good idea. Why not? Necessarily. Uh, because we live in a free world. You know, what we are preaching all the time, let's be free. You know, let market forces make uh, things happen. So, so policy normally sometimes you have to be careful with that. But if you go with the right incentives and you show them the, 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 the beauty about it, you should, I, I will really believe more in moral situation and persuasion than forcing people. So I think that um, uh, countries which are doing that, it's uh, their own internal policies. But uh, for Rwanda, I think company will come on their own uh, because the benefits are many. Sticking to those words, persuasion uh, and more persuasion, uh, when you look at uh, the Nairobi Stock Exchange and you look at the uh, companies on there, you would love to have some of them cross list on the Rwanda Stock Exchange. Is there a plan? Well, there has been a plan. You know, uh, you know the, the, the original plan for the stock market to develop in Rwanda, the capital market, I think, goes way back in 2005, whereby government approved the project of introducing a capital market industry in Rwanda. So you have five pillars. The first one was um, uh, developing the domestic market for the debt market, actually, to get people used to the, the, these instruments, but also to create a proper yield curve to price money the right way for the financial sector, also for monetary policy purposes. So number two was to, uh, to promote privatization. Number three, to, um, to, 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 to promote also private sector companies to come to the market. Uh, number four, to create other institutions uh, which are, were supposed to be uh, helping the capital market develop. That is the demand side, you know, um, uh, is um, institutions like uh, collective investment schemes, uh, fund management companies, commodities exchange eventually, you know, and then the last one was regional integration. So we have it all. So now cross listings were actually number two in all that. So when we started, I think uh, the first company that listed on our market was from the region. So among the, if you look at the Nairobi Securities Exchange, I think companies which dominate actually trading uh, in that market, it's about six, between six and, and eight companies that are really actively trading on the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Of all those companies, we have at least three in Rwanda. So we were hoping, we are hoping to get more from the, 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 the Nairobi Securities Exchange or even the other countries, but mainly the Nairobi Securities Exchange, if we... we what, what would they need? Well, the, uh, what they need is to, to make decisions, I think, uh, and uh, to, to see the benefit of them doing so. We need so. to persuade them. We have to persuade them, uh, and uh, the benefits are there, because most of these companies are doing business in Rwanda. So, I mean, if you are doing business in Rwanda, you should get also your shares to Rwanda for the Rwandans to also participate properly in your uh, uh, business ventures. Thank you very much, Mr. Celestine. Thank you. That was Celestine Rabakumba, the CEO of the Rwanda Stock Exchange.